You should have some notes out. Hey, 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 hey. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. <laughs> Solving absolute value inequalities. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching math with Miss B. Absolute value inequality. So <clears throat> if you get an absolute value inequality that is less than three, you would reformat that, drop the inequality symbols as negative three is less than X and X is less than three. That's an and inequality throwback, okay? Uh, and then if you have an absolute value where X is greater than three, then you reformat that to an or inequality, which is X is greater than three or X is less than negative three. Because remember, absolute value is the distance from zero, okay? So that could have started off as a negative number or it could have started off as a positive number. Okay. <clears throat> Solve the absolute value inequality. I have the absolute value of x minus four is less than three. You always wanna make sure that your absolute value is isolated. So in this case, it is. So because it's less than three, we're gonna set up the inequality. Remember, when it's less than, I'm gonna set it up as an and. Okay, so I have negative three is less than x minus four is less than three. Okay, we're gonna isolate x. So that means I need to get x by itself. So there's a minus four next to x. So obviously what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add four. So to cancel out that four in the middle, and then I'm gonna add four to the three, and then I'm also gonna add four to the negative three. I know, crazy. All right? So once I do that, I will simplify the problem. So negative three plus four is gonna be one x is going to be alone because the negative 4 and the positive 4 cancel out and then 3 plus 4 is 7 okay so now that x is by itself obviously what I'm going to do now is I'm going to graph so I'm going to set up my number line in this case I set up my number line by skipping twos 2 4 6 8 10 12 um so my first number is 1 and then my next number is 7 so we're going to use parentheses in this case okay because my symbols are less than if they were less than equal to i would use brackets but we're going to use parentheses and we're going to shade in the middle because it's an and inequality so that is my solution that's not that bad right guys okay so we have four examples that was example number one now let's move on to example number two Solve the absolute value inequality. So remember, you always wanna isolate the absolute value first. The problem that we just did, the absolute value was already isolated, but in this case, I need to get rid of that seven, and I need to get rid of that negative two before the absolute value is alone. So we're gonna subtract seven from both sides. That's an easy, easy fix, right? And so that's negative 13 minus seven, so that's negative 20. And then I'm gonna get rid of that negative two, it's being, it's touching by multiplication, so obviously I'm gonna divide by two on one side, divide by negative two on the other side. Remember that when you multiply or divide by a negative, when you're doing inequalities, you must flip the inequality symbol. No exceptions, have to, have to, have to. So now once I do that, my absolute value is isolated. It's a less than. So that means I need to set up my inequality appropriately. So I'll both go back to my first slide and I'll be like, okay, how do I set up? So that means negative 10 is less than or equal to 3x plus 5, less than or equal to 10. Hey! So we're going to isolate x now. We dropped the inequality symbols at this point. Pay attention to that. And now we're going to isolate x. So the first thing I'm going to get rid of is the 5. So we're going to add 5. I mean, subtract five, excuse me, from the five, subtract five from the 10, and subtract five from the negative 10 on the other side. 
negative 15 is less than or equal to 3x less than or equal to 5. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to graph, but obviously I don't have enough space for that, right? Right. So here we go. To the other slide. Oh, we're not, we not done isolating x yet. So yeah, I have to, still have to divide by 3. Duh. Now x is going to be isolated. Negative 15 divided by 3 is going to be negative 5. is less than or equal to x. And then 5 divided by 3 is just going to be 5 over 3. I'm not flipping my inequality symbol. Why? Because that was a positive number. Okay. Yay. Now we can graph. So I'm going to set up my number line. I went by 2s again so that I could fit everything. So I'm using brackets. Why am I using brackets? Because I have an equal to. So we're going to put a bracket on negative 5, a bracket on 5 thirds. Notice 5 thirds is close to the 2. Um, and then I shade in the middle because it's an and inequality. So there's my solution. Yay. All right, y'all. Halfway done. So let's say I have a problem that 7 is less than 5, the absolute value of 5 minus 2x. When I flip that problem over, because, you know, we like our x to be on one side and then our the constant, the other part of the problem to be on the other side, right? So I flipped it around, but make sure when you flip it, you flip that symbol too, okay? So the original problem looks like the one above, and then I just flipped it to look like the second row. Okay, but notice it was a less than, but now it's a greater than in the second row. Because when you flip inequalities, you just, foop. I don't know if y'all caught that. Foop. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so it's a greater than now. So that means we're going to set up our inequality. So when I set up my inequality, um, I use the format of the greater than, which gives me an or. Okay. And I dropped my inequality symbols. So one is greater than seven, and the other one is going to be less than negative seven pay attention to that so we're gonna isolate x so I'm gonna do the one on the left hand side first so I'm gonna subtract five from both sides we get two x is greater than two and I'm gonna divide by negative two what do you do when you divide by a negative come on somebody you flip the symbol Yes. Uh, okay, good. Um, so now I'm going to do the other one. So I'm going to subtract by 5. And then I'm going to divide by 2. We make sure we flipped our symbol because we divided by a negative 2. So x is greater than 6. So obviously we are going to graph now. So we have to ask ourselves, what kind of symbols do I use? Do I use parentheses or do I use brackets? Definitely gonna use some brackets, babe. I mean, some parentheses, baby, because we don't have equal twos, okay? So one is going this way, the other one's going that way because remember, it's an or. Boom, love to see it. And this is our solution in set notation and in interval notation, yes. We have one more example. So again, the original problem was 18 is less than absolute value 6 minus 3x. But I flipped it. So that looks like the other way around. And that tells me how to set up my inequality. Okay. Notice this inequality is already isolated, right? That second problem that we did, we had to get rid of some stuff before it was isolated. Anytime, I just don't want y'all to forget, sometimes you're going to have to isolate your inequality. But in this case, you do not. All right. So we're going to set it up. So our setup for when the problem is greater than is I set up an or inequality, okay? Where one is greater than 18 and the other one is less than negative 18. That's what you got to pay attention to. So we're going to isolate X, right? So we're going to subtract 6 on both sides. Okay, negative 3X is greater than 12. Once I do that, I'm going to divide by negative 3. What happens when you divide by a negative? 
you flip your symbol. Don't play. Okay. So then we're gonna minus six on both sides. And what are we gonna get? Now we have to divide by negative three. What happens when you divide by a negative? Mm-hmm. We're gonna flip our symbol. So notice they're pointing in opposite direction. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, here's mine. <laughs> uh, what are we doing, brackets or parentheses? Good, parentheses, parentheses on four, parentheses, negative four, parentheses on eight. And this is my solution. <laughs> All right, y'all. What do I always say? I say go back through the video. See if you get it without my help. Uh-huh. So that means do it without looking at the notes. Or refer to the notes sometimes, whatever. But you need to see if you can do it alone. Because staring at me don't mean you know how to do it. Okay? And if not, I will catch you in the next one. Bye!